Hey guys, welcome to Define Agile. This is Anatoly. We're talking here everything Agile. Today we're going to do another app review. But before we do, let me tell you about the problem that I have. With the COVID, we all move to remote work. And this is great. I love remote work. But the teams that were working with a certain process, let's say a lot of Agile teams that are working in the Scrum framework, some of those Scrum ceremonies are very hard to do remotely. There are not enough good tools to do that. One of the most important ceremonies out there is retrospective, where we get together as a team and figure out what went well in the sprint, what didn't go well, how we can improve, have some action items to constantly improve as a team. And usually, if you're doing it remotely, you're using some whiteboarding tool and it's not linked into Jira, then you go back to Jira, then you create your tickets, then you go to Confluence, to your action items. So it's a lot of work, a lot of different tools. Well, I'm happy to say that I found a tool that solved this and it's called Agile Retrospectives for Jira. This video is sponsored by these guys. They made an amazing product and I'm very excited to show it to you today. So first we're gonna look at the app itself, we're gonna look at the pricing, and then I'm gonna walk you through the functionality. We need to go to apps, we need to go to explore more apps, then we need to type agile retrospectives. And the first one is the one that we will be looking at today, it's cloud security participant, I'm always happy to see that, good reviews, let's click on it. We see they have video that you can watch how it works. There are a bunch of screenshots. Uh, they talk about functionality, but I know what you guys are curious about. You guys are curious about the price. So let me show you the pricing page as well. Here is the pricing page. And for the first 10 users, it is $20 a month. You can also try it for free. Click free trial. I highly recommend you do that. Check it out. It can save you money on a bunch of other tools you're using for retrospectives. And I think it's a great deal. Also, if you have like 100 users, that it's $185 per user and $185 a month. Let me show you how it works. Here we are. This is my Scrum project. And now, since I set up Edge Retrospectives, I have a Retrospectives button right here. I can click on it. Here we are, Retrospectives UI, you can see some completed sessions, they're all tagged, so if you want to search for sessions, let's say some of my sessions are all team, some of my sessions are design team, I just click all team, and I can just filter very, very easily. Let's get rid of this. Let me show you how to uh, set up new retrospective, let's click on it. Here we go, new retrospective, let's put a name. Define Agile for Retro. The tags allows us to search. Let's say it's a design team retrospective. And it allows us to search in a dashboard like I showed you before. So tags are very important. Next one is retrospective format. What I like about it, they took the most used retrospectives and put them right here as templates for us. What went well, for else, liked, learned, lacked, long for. Star Stop Continue, Matt Sad Glad, Lean Coffee, KLM. We'll use what went well. But also if you don't like those templates, you can always delete them, change colors, you can add new columns, and then you can save to the template and use it in future. So if there's something that you do differently in your team, that's completely fine. This is very customizable. Let's look at preferences as well. Anonymous idea, something I really like. Let's say you're discussing the topic that is very sensitive and you don't want to track who submits what ideas, then you can have anonymous. The moderator can be either dynamic, so anybody can be a moderator or preset. If you have a scrum master that you want to be a moderator, there are different grouping modes. So you can group between columns or one topic at a time. I'll show how to group once we start retrospective. There's grouping permissions, anyone can group or moderator can only group. Then there's maximum votes per player because we're gonna group first and we'll vote for the most important things then we'll create action items. This is how most retrospectives are held and I love that they move us through all these steps. So max votes per player, I live unlimited so anybody can vote uh, as much as they want but only one vote per topic. Last one is visibility restrictions. If you have sensitive topics out there, 
you don't want everybody in your Jira instance to see it, then you can set up visibility restrictions. Currently I have, everyone has access, I can change it to has no access, and then I can add define agile developer to have access. So me and define agile developer has access, everybody else do not have access, I click apply. You can start your session right after this, or you can save it, you can save it as a session, you can save it as a template to use later. I will just save it as a session. Here we go. Again, if I wanna see all the design team retrospectives, I just search for it. And I see my sessions in progress and my completed sessions. So you can run parallel retrospectives as well, which is totally fine. Now, if I wanna change anything, I can click on settings, change the settings, I can delete it, I can change restrictions. Very good UI, very easy to use. Let's join the retrospective. So I joined, I'm a moderator now, you see the crown, but I can give the moderator to other people as well. Nobody else is here, so we're waiting for Define Agile developer to join. Let's say we're in a Zoom meeting and I'm telling him, just join the link I go here, I click copy, the link is copied, I give the financial developer a link and he can join. So let's see what is the financial developer sees here. Here I am as a defined agile developer, I see the summary of the session, I see what the format is, and then I see who is a moderator and I cannot start it because only moderator can start the session. So let's say everybody's here, we're ready to start. Now as a moderator, I click get started and automatically it changes to the first exercise and it does change for Define Agile Developer as well. Let's take a look at uh, their screen. Define Agile Developer, see the same screen and now we can start collecting ideas. What went well? Let's say our pay programming was amazing. Start collecting ideas, what didn't go well? Too many meetings. Scrum meeting was not facilitated well. Now let's say what went well, lunch and learn. Delivered all features. And then what didn't go well, uh, can't meet with my manager. So we're starting putting those ideas in as a financial developer. Now let's see what does uh, other person sees. So now I'm as Anatoly, who is a moderator here and I see, okay, I see a defined agile developer submits ideas, but I cannot see them, they grayed out. This allows us to avoid groupthink when everybody is just putting same ideas and we don't have anything new. So that's why for the first step, we don't see what other people are typing, but we see that they are submitting ideas and everybody in a team can see that. So let's say as a moderator, I'm participant as well. I wanna submit some ideas. Pair programming went really well. What did not go well, um, manager was not present in the demo. And then what went well, lunch and learn, what well, didn't go well, uh, too many bugs, what went well, delivery. And then the other user also sees that I am typing and then if they wanna type, this release had too many bugs. And then when we're ready, I click on ready. See, there's a check mark here. As a moderator, I can see a check mark. I'm ready as well. So let's go to the next step. Next step is all about grouping ideas together. So now we can see all the ideas that were submitted and who submitted them because it's not anonymous. And now we can start grouping them. So in the Zoom call, I say, okay guys, now let's group some ideas together. Let's say I start too many bugs, release had too many bugs, we just drag and drop them and we can easily create a group. Bugs in the release, very easy. 
Usually it requires post-it notes, putting them in a group, the post-it notes fly over the room. This is very, very nice. So let's group the ideas as a defined agile developer as well. I see that there's group already and then, okay, let me see something else. Can meet with my manager, manager not present in the demo. I say, okay, this is manager. And then what went well, lunch and learn. Let's call this lunch and learn. And then pair programming. Let's have pair programming. And then delivery and delivery. We can just say delivery. And some of them, let's say, are not uh, grouped as well. So now we're ready. I say, I'm ready. And the more is like, okay, let's go to the next step. So we click ready, click next. The next stage is prioritizing. Sometimes we have so many of those groups that we cannot tackle all those groups in a retro. So we need to prioritize. Now we say, okay, guys, let's vote for what you think is the most important. And everybody votes. I say, okay, can be my manager is very important. Let's talk about delivery as well. Now let's talk about too many bugs. And then the financial developer says, yes, too many bugs are important. And also pair programming was amazing is important. So we're ready. I see the divine de the financial developer is ready. I click ready, click next. And here we go. Now we can create action items based on what we see. What I really like that it's already grouped everything by the most votes. So we're very focused here. We see all the ideas, we see all the votes, we see the group name. So now we can just sit down and create action item. So we discuss and say, okay, this list has too many bugs. What do we need to do? We need to uh, make sure we write unit tests. Let's create action item. And then I say, okay, the financial developer, you want to take this? They say, yeah, I want to take this. Assign, very easy. What else we can do? Uh, work with QA on a plan. Okay, who is gonna do that? I'm gonna take it. Very good. Let's go to the next issue. As soon as we click next, the financial developer sees the next item. So they see on their screen everything um, as Morit is doing. Delivery went well. Um, what do we need to do? have a celebration party or well, let's say organize who's going to do that well Anatoly so define agile developer can create action items and assign them as well but they cannot move between them so we're ready with this one let's go to the next one pair programming went well uh, let's say we want to schedule another pair programming session with define agile developer and then I'll sign it to myself and then let's say we don't have more time we're like okay I think we're already the hour have passed we create action items now but we need to go and uh, see what we have so so I'm ready are you ready to find agile developer I'm ready then let's finish this retro when we're finishing retro, this is a summary view that you can go back and see. I love this view. It has all the grouping, it has all the action items, but it also has where these action items came from. So summary of ideas. So we know that organize a celebration party, it's about delivery, deliver all features. Then we can see, okay, bugs in the release. What did we talk about? The release has too many bugs, too many bugs. And then here's our action items. And the other really cool feature that I like that saves you lots of time is that you can create Jira issue right from here. So let's say we agree they want to put this into a sprint. So we click create an issue. It will pre-fill everything. Summary is here. Reporter is here, which is, um, we know that this came from retrospective for Jira. All the information is here. What are topics discussed? Link to retrospective. Everything is here. So we can just click create and it will be created and we can do it for all the issues. Then we can go back here and do it as many times as we want. 
and then if we want to reopen it let's say okay let's continue this in two days and tackle more issues we can reopen the session and go through it again if we go to retrospectives we see the dashboard we see that our retrospective is completed pending action items create action items we we'll archive it we can archive it you want to go back and see the summary we click on it and here we go we're back to a summary everything is in jira create your issues right from here we went through the whole process no whiteboard needed no external apps needed we did everything in one place i think it's amazing do you have any questions put them in the comments down below please try this app i think it's amazing there's a free trial i'll put a link on the top in the description check it out let me know what you think if you like the video please like and subscribe and i'll see you next one bye bye